Hey, this is Max from Burning the Day, and you're listening to Broken, Broken Neck, Neck Radio. Radio. Metal that makes you want to break shit. Fuck yeah. This is Reckless here at Wacken Metal Battle Canada, and I have with me Burning the Day, one of five contestants that are competing in the Wacken Metal Battle Contest, and the one band that will rule them all will be playing in Wacken 2014 over in Germany. With me today, I have Steve Mitchell on drums and Maxim Shelkoff, lead guitars. How are you guys doing today? Doing excellent. Awesome. <laughs> are you guys pumped for this uh, competition? And, uh, oh, not even a bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, do I detect a little sarcasm and, and uh, ironicness yeah, there? <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> uh, look, we're very pumped to play this. This yeah. is this is very cool. We've been waiting. Yeah. yeah. We've been waiting. You guys have been uh, in the Toronto scene for many years now, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think about I don't know, what is it? Maybe 7 years, but this lineup currently has been around for about 2 years. So, yep. you know, we've been around people know us. <laughs> so, uh, what was the nucleus and uh, how did you all meet and create Burning the Day? Um, well, me and Matt Metcalf were basically, well, Matt's basically the original member. I joined up about five years ago, and then everything just kind of fell apart, and then we needed to rebuild, and uh, we ended up seeking out Matt. It was, it was a pretty easy switch from Braden Hoey, who was the original guitar player, and then it was a switch from him to Max. And that was just a very, very easy switch. They've been friends for a while. And uh, then we ended up scoping out Dimitri on bass. Uh, that was that, that was about a six-month look, been a six-month search to find that guy. And Cesar Silva, he was a very easy transition as well. We went from one vocalist. He searched us out. He found, a, he found an ad from pretty much. We were just throwing it out there everywhere. And then Cesar, he ended up just coming to us. And so everything just kind of came together. Everybody just kind of came to us. <laughs> Can't ask for more than that, right? It's perfect. It was Destin. It so, was Destiny. Uh, <laughs> destiny. Like looking into Maxim's eyes. <laughs> All right, so uh, who made up the name of the band, and uh, what are your musical influences growing up? Oh, my God. The, I think, well, I think the band the came from... Right, yeah, I mean, the name came from Matt, and uh, their old singer, Chris Gillespie, I think he came up with it, calling it Burning the Day. But uh, as far as musical influences, man, it goes... I mean, starting with Metallica, going to Pantera, you know, Tool, Lamb of God... Rage Against the Machine, the list goes on, just, you know, the staples, Dream yep. Theater, I mean... I understand. Yeah, just too many, mu I don't know, too many musical influences <laughs> to count, because back in the day, at least for me anyway, I came from, uh, I, I came from a background of a pop-punk kid, like, I wasn't even a metal guy growing up, and eventually, I started with, like, Blink-182, Sum 41, Green Day, all that stuff, and then moved to, like, a hardcore punk background, American hardcore punk background, and then eventually, like, it just kept getting heavier and heavier and heavier right. from there until somebody, until my cousin one day played me Slayer, and it was just, like, uh -huh. same story about Slayer that you'll always hear until the end of time, but my cousin played me Slayer, fucking lost it, and I fell in love with metal. Uh huh. Uh, we can all understand that. Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, you guys evolved uh, in your inception. That was 2005, and uh, since then, you guys have got four albums under your belt. Uh, give us a breakdown of uh, you know the, what the process was on each one, as far as engineering and uh, you know the overall vibe of each one represents to you. Um, you know, 2006 and Fall She Sleeps, 2007 Dawn of Thorns. 2009 blacklisted and now you've got hey, metamorphosis on 20 uh, 2013 uh so just give us a rundown of um you know uh, how things have evolved yeah well, sure I'll, I'll take it considering i guess i was around for a little bit more of the process well at least me and matt were anyway uh i came in for blacklisted but i guess the process of we're just finding ourselves as a band. Like each record, just keep it just continuously kept stepping up. Like, and you could hear the progression of it, of how each record noticeably of from production to songs to just lyrical content to everything that was going on. Everything just sort of stepped up and up and up until it got to blacklist, and then that was like a bit more of a stretch for an album. That one cost ten thousand dollars to make that album, and it sounds like a ten thousand dollar album of a very, very, very produced album of from everything. Like I just sort of spot, I, I sort of spout out of the type of production and the songwriting and this that and the rest of it well that's that's the key ticket here you know sometimes quality does does take a few bucks in uh 2012 you guys came up on uh, and ended up on the top over 250 bands in the indie week canada can you tell me a little bit about the whole experience and what was the indie week all about 
Um, Indie Week. Indie Week just sort of was our launching pad, really, for everything that we're doing now. It led us to so many other things that we couldn't even really imagine doing so quickly, like us being a band for a couple of years, and then to be able to say that we're touring England, and to be able to say that we got to tour Ireland for a week, and to be able to say that like all these things that we never imagined doing, and then to come back and have an amazing homecoming, and that just sort of spawned for even more fans, and that spawned for even more notoriety. And you had support from uh, Self Made Records for that tour over to the UK, didn't you? Yep. Uh, John Huddy, he really he helped us out a lot. Like that guy, really he he took us under a wing. We're not really affiliated with so we're not affiliated with Self Made Records at all anymore, really, because uh, that went to a different company. Like John ended up selling it to another person, and it just sort of went a separate direction. And so, if anything, we just kind of we we did what we needed to do with John Huddy, and he really helped us as far as giving us a place to stay for that two and a half months that we were in England. Mm-hmm. And really, like taking the time to really help us out and really, uh, really give us a chance to to tour all the places that we wanted. Excellent. So, like, like I, I was asked, you almost answered my next question here. So that that uh, that journey over to the UK really cemented the band. And uh, did you did you feel like it made a difference uh, being accepted in Europe and uh, like across the pond, as we like to say, and now worldwide? Oh, it was awesome. Striking that first chord over in Ireland and people, you know, going crazy made us realize, you know, it's not just, you know, it's not just at home that we can do right. this thing. We can go to any country in the world and as long as people are into hard music, they will appreciate, uh, you know, what we're doing. And same thing happened in England as well. We had, you know, we had crazy crowds. We had people going, wow, you guys are, you know, what are you guys doing here in this small little bar? But, you know, yeah. it was just so fun. It was so fun. It was that, awesome. That's a cool story. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, you've shared the stage with such great bands as Goat Horror, Three Inches of Blood, The Black Dalma Murder, uh, Bury Your Dead, Beneath, Soil Work, Bring Me the Horizon. Um, do you feel like you've made any great common camaraderie with those bands, and uh, do you have any s- crazy stories to tell? <laughs> um, no, because really the, the lineup that is going on now, we never really got a chance to do any Inertia shows because that was all through Inertia Entertainment. Uh-huh. And no, yeah, coincidentally, Noel okay. Peters is also one of the judges tonight. And it... It just kind of turned out that when after I joined the band, all those shows stopped happening. It was all like before, and I had actually seen the first time I'd ever seen Burning the Day was when they opened for Soil Work, and I'd never even heard of this band. And then nobody was, it was kind of golf claps at the beginning, and then by the end, it just because I looked at my buddy and was like, well, let's watch the, the train wreck happen with the indie band from Toronto that everybody wants to see Soil Work. And yeah. then it turned out by the end, everybody was fists in the air and chanting, and chanting Burning the Day because they played Pantera at the end. Uh, you're my cameraman here he's he's a big fan he's he's uh trevor big salute how's it going guys hey, awesome. hey man <laughs> that's an awesome shirt <laughs> right on <laughs> uh looking forward looking forward uh what other bands would you feel would be a great gig to share the stage with like the dream gig oh dream gig yeah Oh man, that's so hard again. Yeah, I mean, uh, really I'm giving the many, hard ones, aren't I? There's too many bands. Yeah, it's yeah. really to the point of like, especially if you get to go do a thing like this and you get to go see Vakken, okay, so of like you get all your favorite bands all in one. That it's like there's just literally there's too many bands to count of just yeah. the, of what it would be like to get that phone call of like, hey, you're going out with Black Dahlia Murder, or hey, you're going out with yeah. you know blah blah blah, and it's just to the point of like, holy crap, my list is just endless. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, okay. Uh, um, all right, so uh, do you have any, uh, overall, the entire whack and metal battle experience uh, for you uh, has been very positive. As you said, um, you've had a great camaraderie and, and uh, networking that's gone all on through this whole process. For sure. Um, now, do you feel that, yeah, it's obviously going to be a great stepping stone regardless of who wins tonight and for all bands involved, eh? Yeah, absolutely, and the fact that, uh, the, well, I guess this thing is, is a huge stepping stone for sure, but it's just the the fact of all these bands coming together as, as one big band tonight and really showing everybody a great time for 10 bucks, and these bands that are coming all over the place mm-hmm. for coming from Vancouver yeah. to come down here and play this thing and to see their faces walking in of this venue that they've never played before, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden within five minutes now we're best friends, and we haven't even played a show together yet, so we still have the rest of the night to look forward to and have bands now in those parts of Canada that we can go back to and we can we can call up anytime we want. 
the longevity is there. Yep. Oh, for sure. And it's a really cool vibe here today as well. It's like everyone's helping each other out and everyone's talking. It yeah. doesn't even feel like this is a you know competition. It's all just a whole bunch of friends getting together and you know going to bang out some hard tunes and you know going to jump around the stage and make fool or else there. Yeah, yeah. Like we're all going to bro down. down. We're just going to bro down. <laughs> yeah, man, and just have the best time <laughs> ever. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so what are your plans for uh, you know the end of this year, next year? Are you guys working on anything new material wise, idea wise uh, for next? CD? Yeah, some new ideas have been uh, floating around. We definitely started writing some new stuff. Um, we've been rehearsing much more for just for you know getting our live show together. But as far as we do want to release something by the end of the year, yep. either another EP or another full length. Haven't really decided, but new ideas are you know being thought of. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, is there anyone that you'd like to thank tonight that's invo been involved in this uh, metal journey, or sponsors, family, friends? I would like to thank the whole organization for this. Really, and not nobody specific. I think everybody has been great. Um, all the bands tell the truth. Every everybody that's been coming out, all the people have come out and see this. This is it, it's all one big thing. It's all one big part of it. So everybody. Yeah, and I'm pretty much in the exact same boat. I would say John Asher, JJ. Uh, there's there's too many people that are on the panel of, of this whole thing, of this whole Valk and right. Band battle that's really launched to a different level of the amount of bands that are all involved in it. As opposed to last year, that wasn't really so. It was more of just like you know, Toronto, Montreal, and now it's all over Canada. So it's really like obviously made its outreach to more and more people and more and more bands. And I'm just stoked to see where this thing is going to go from here, where Canadian metal is really going to get shown off and the bands that are going to get shown off from this. Exactly. That's my thoughts as well. Uh, may heavy metal stay strong and prosper in Canada Indeed. and live forever. That's right. Indeed. All right. This is Burning the Day uh, here on Broken Neck Radio at the Wacken Metal Battle Canada. And I've been chatting here with Steve Mitchell and Maxim Shelkov, lead guitars and drums. And um, I want to thank you guys a million, man. And best of luck tonight. I really hope you just fucking kick some ass. And I know you're going to give it your all. And uh, I'm looking forward to the show. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Man. Thank you.